Hello guys and welcome back to another video and uh, before I go any further I wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So we're going to go ahead and finish uh, setting up or configuring uh, our CAD software. So I'm going to open up draft site and I'm going to open up the, uh, the prototype drawing that we were working on. And so here, uh, let's see, we were working on uh, the dimensioning lines. So if this line here, the one that I've got highlighted there, if that's a 10 foot long line, you can tell that just proportionally the text is going to be pretty big. So what we want to do is we want to change that to a smaller font, smaller size text. So if you click on the, on the dimension line on that entity, come over here to properties. I'll show you guys how to change it here first and then we'll globally change it. So you won't have to do this every time, but this is a good, this gives you a good idea of just, you know, what you use the properties window for. So the attribute we're looking for is, is text. So here you can see the deep, the, well, we took the defaults when we started to dimension and it, the default's 0.18. So if we change that to 0.10, you can see it made it a lot smaller and that's probably uh, probably where I'm going to leave mine set. I mean, you can set yours to whatever you want. Again, see this one down here is still, still pretty big. So uh, the way that we would change that globally, where you don't have to do that for each dimension line, is you would go under Tools, Options, come over here to Drafting Styles, uh, expand the Dimension node, and come down to Text and Text Settings. So as you can see, it's defaulting to 0.18. So if we change that to 0.1, then it should be uh, applicable for all dimension styles from here forward. So uh, the other thing is, is you could change the, te the uh, font style if you want. Uh, I'm not going to change it here. I'm going to change it uh, just a little bit higher up where it says text here and that'll change it globally for everything. Any Anytime you put text on the screen uh, it's going to be a certain style that I like to use any way. It's called a stylus BT I think. It looks more like a handwritten font. But uh, anyway, so back on dimension, uh, just make sure that you I guess I already hit apply and hit OK. Maybe not. Options, dimension, text, text settings, 0.10, hit apply, okay, and there we go. So you can see this one's now the same size as that one. So from here on out, if we dimension, if we dimension another line again, it should be the same size, and as you can see it is. Okay, so that takes care of that. So yeah, the, uh, and again, I'm just showing you how to you know these are the settings that I prefer I mean you can change it to whatever you want but for the uh, for the text uh, what I'm going this this is actually what they're going to call the name of the text and then this is the system uh, font that you're actually using so the Windows font for this name so in other words you're going to call it standard but it's using an Arial system font so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to stylus BT that one right there as you can see up here in the preview pane, it looks more like a handwritten font, which is what I like. Again, you can use whatever you want. Um, okay, let's go ahead and select OK. So now I'm going to show you guys uh, a command to put text on the, you know, without just like if you wanted to label something. So what you would want to do is there's a there's a command called mtext and so as you can see I typed it in down here and I'm gonna hit enter and it's asking me for the first specify the first corner so you can think of this mtext it'll bring up an editor but you can think of it as is this being like a, a bounding box for your text and so in here we can just type in I don't know uh, my Oops, my first railroad layout. There we go. Just click anywhere on the screen to end, end the command. Okay, well, 
So there's if you double click on that, you can see there's a you can set the text height right here as well. So I mean if you wanted it bigger, you know, you could you could type in 0.35 and uh, you know, here say what you need to do though is you need to highlight the text that you want to change. So 0.35 and uh, I don't know, let's underline it. So you can see you get that. So I mean you guys will if you use any kind of text editor on a computer, I mean this is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna exit out of that. I'm just gonna move that. Uh, move that over here to the side for right now. Oh little box. Remember I was talking about grips? You know that's that's how you can move it. Or if you want to, you can type in M for move, hit enter, select it, right click, and it's asking you for a base point to move it from. You know, let's just click up here somewhere, or we could move it this way. So I'm going to go through a list of the commands that we'll be using. Uh, it's really only a handful. You use them repetitively, so it's it's not really uh, that I know it may seem a little uh, daunting I guess you could say but it's really not the commands that we're going to be using to draw lines and to edit lines uh, there's just a handful so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, uh, so with this CAD with this CAD engine you can configure a thing called aliases and so what an alias is, is it's just a way to rename a command, if you will. So if, you know, every command has something, I don't know if you guys noticed, but, but earlier, you know, I was able to go up here to dimension and dimension aligned. Okay, well, if you look down here, look down here when I hover over dimension aligned, you see that parallel dimension? that is that would be the command that you would type in the command line if you wanted to do it from the command line okay so you can see that's pretty long so what an alias will do is it'll allow us to reassign uh, a shortcut or keys to this particular command and not have to type in parallel dimension and because I use the command line a lot I don't really use my pull downs too much so for me it's just quicker to type it in down here so let's go ahead and set up uh, the dimension align command uh, for with an alias so if you come under tools go under uh, uh, options and uh, I can't yeah under user preferences and uh, go under aliases and so here's all of the the uh, the commands for for draft site uh, and as you can see the alias is out here to the side so if we come down to dimension aligned they may actually call it like parallel in AutoCAD it's called dimension aligned so they may have just to keep from you know, copying AutoCAD, they may have renamed the command to uh, something like parallel dimension or something like that. Yeah. So, but this is the dimension aligned command. So, as you can see, these are the shortcuts. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one here and I am actually going to edit that from, from DAL to just DA for dimension aligned and that that's what I use all the time so after you change it hit apply and so now instead of having to come up here and go aligned or type in you know any of those other aliases I'm going to use the one I created so it's just DA enter and there you go okay so see I think like dimension corner Let's see what the shortcut is for that one. Uh, let's see here. Angular dimension. You can see down at the bottom of my screen down here it's called angular or angle. 
angle dimension. So if we, so instead of doing that, I want to set a shortcut of like DC for dimension corner. So go back under options, user preferences, aliases. Um, Trying to remember what they called it. I think it was wasn't it corner dimension? No, angle dimension. Okay. Like I said, there's there's a couple of there's just kind of the the commands and everything are different from AutoCAD. So so here we go. We got angle dimension here. So I want to change that. For me, I just want it to be DC for dimension corner. Okay. And then I'm going to hit apply and then OK. So now if we come under here and we dimension, say we want to dimension this cornering, the, what the angle is between these, these two lines, I can just type in DC and it's asking me to specify entity. So I'm going to select the first one here and I'll select the second one here. And there you go. Now that's rounding up there. I know that's not exactly 29 degrees. So see in fact it's uh, well I've got everything going uh, clockwise on the angle turning so let's go and change that to where the precision's a little bit greater so we'll go under options back to drafting styles dimension and uh, let's see this time angular dimension angular dimension settings so here we're just precision it rounded up so we want to change that to uh, I want to change mine to degrees, minutes, and seconds, and I want it to display degrees, minutes, and seconds. So hit apply. If you remember this, this is the same. Uh, this is the same process we did back. I think it was in video one. So hit apply and OK. And as you can see there, it gives me, you know, the exact angle. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to cut the piece of wood to that <laughs> specific angle, but you can cut it to 2830. You know, so I just like to see, I like to see, you know, to the second. So, um, so that's how you would set up your aliases. So if you're following along with these tutorials and you see me type in something and it doesn't work for you, uh, then that's, it's because I've changed an alias. I've changed a command, uh, the alias for a particular command. So like polyline, and I'll explain what a polyline is here shortly. Let's see if they take. So the AutoCAD command is P line. Yeah, so you can you can get by with polyline. We don't need to change it. Erase that. Uh, let's see. What would be another one? How about trim? So what trim does is uh, well, let's see if it's in here. So if I type in TR, I know that's the uh, AutoCAD command. Okay, so that's the same thing there too. Uh, trim, trim. What trim does is it allows you to trim entities. So I'm just going to draw a line across the screen. And what I'm doing there, by the way, to, to end the command is I'm hitting the right mouse button. If you remember back when we in the first video we configured the right mouse button settings. So that's how I'm able to do that. Uh, if you didn't do that, then you're going to, you know, you're going to have to hit enter on your keyboard. So, uh, so I've got a line here, and then I'll draw another line like that. So, well, I don't want this part of the line. I want this line to meet perfectly with this line. How would I do that? Well, there's two ways to do that. You could use the trim command, which is TR. And if you notice, it's asking you for a cutting edge. This would be our cutting edge, because this is what we're going to cut to. So we'd select that, and then we'd right click and then it's asking me down here specify segments to remove we would click on this side of the line because this is what we want to remove and you can do it like that a quicker way to do that and I'm going to hit control Z to undo that a quicker way to do that is by grip editing and if you remember I think it was the first video also I uh, alluded to the fact that you can grip edit so we're going to do that here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and grab the grip with and with the mouse with hit, clicking the left button and as you can see I've grabbed on to the end of that line and I'm going to come up here 
and I'm going to put it, see where it says intersection, a little little X pops up. You can probably, I don't know if you can see it on my screen or not, but a little X pops up, and we could do it just like that. By the way, I was zooming in and out with the middle mouse but with the middle mouse button. So as you can see, that was that was a whole lot quicker. You know, I'm gonna undo that just to go like this. You know, now the thing you got to keep in mind is down here on your entity snaps. I'm gonna right click settings. You can see these are the ones that are already they're turned on. So uh, intersection was one of them. So if that wasn't checked, and my line was out here like this, and I wanted to do that it wouldn't work. You can see it's trying to do a, a perpendicular because you're getting that little right angle symbol and it's trying to do a midpoint which is the you know the, the triangle or even an endpoint you know the square down here it's not giving you the intersection. If you find yourself in this situation and you don't want to go down here you can you can change these dynamically as you're going along. Uh, what you could do is you could also type in INTER for intersection. And you can see down here in the, in the command it's saying intersection of. Well, there we go. Okay, but as you can see here, intersection is not even turned on. So we were able to do, in the middle of a command, we were able to determine that we wanted it to snap to an intersection. Okay. So, I'm just going to come back in here and turn it on. These are the ones that I like to have turned on, okay? And, uh, yeah, we'll leave them like that. I was going to say something else, but we'll just leave them like that for right now. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, believe it or not, I think that's pretty much it as far as setting up the, the CAD engine. Uh, if we need any kind of configuration, we can do that as we go along because I'm sure I'll run into something and it'll be like, well, I need to really configure that just so I'll be efficient in, uh, in using the software. So, uh, so guys, um, I hope this helps out and uh, in the next video, we're going to actually start looking at the, uh, the drafting commands that we'll be needing to, uh, to produce our model railroad plan. Thanks for watching.